Hi, I'm Tony with Sign and Digital Graphics Magazine. I'm joined today by Mike Dean. He's one of the founders, one of the owners of Epilogue Laser right here in Golden, Colorado. Mike, thank you for being with us here. Most of our readers, many of them, are sign shop guys. So if I'm a sign shop person and I've got my printer and I've got my router, why should I consider adding a laser to that mix? You should consider adding a laser because of the ease of use, of the ease of cutting out, especially acrylic shapes or letters. Um, it's incredibly easy to do. You take an artwork file, you send it to the laser, it follows the profile of the letter or the object, and cuts it out, you're done. There's essentially no programming. Also, on the smaller side, you can get into things like ADA signage, where you can cut out the ADA icons, and it can't actually do the braille dots, but it can cut out the letters, the icons, and even the background material. And that's what sign makers are finding to be uh, very popular products to produce. I'm poking around on your website, your competitors' websites. I'm seeing things like uh, bed width, and I'm seeing power, like 30, is it amps? Or 130 watts, or 120 watts. And I'm seeing all these specs, and I'm going, I'm not sure what any of this means. Well, there are several things to consider. The first thing would be bed size. So we manufacture a number of different bed sizes from 16 by 12 inches in size up to 40 inches by 28. And most sign shops need the larger bed sizes because oftentimes their individual objects like the letters or the objects that they're cutting out are very large. And so bed size is the first thing. Laser wattage is the second thing I would look at because the wattage tells you how thick a material you can cut through. So if you buy a 120 watt laser, you're gonna be able to cut through half inch acrylic. If you buy a 30 watt laser, you're gonna be limited to a quarter inch. And what about uh, the installation process? If I have done my, done my homework and I, I see a laser epilogue mix that I like, what's the next step? Once you purchase a laser, installing it is very easy. You need to plug it into your computer, and you can plug in through either an Ethernet cable, our machines are networkable, or a USB cable. The only other thing you need is an exhaust system, which is typically an exhaust fan that sucks the smoke and debris out of the engraving cabinet and then exhausts it to the outside. There are filters that you can purchase if you want to, if you can't get to the outside but you need to exhaust the smoke and debris. I noticed, and we're obviously in a hall at a trade show here, but I noticed all of the units have sort of a, a self-contained exhaust system. Is that something I would also buy from Epilogue, or do I need to engage a third party? Some manufacturers offer the filter systems. Epilogue recommends several. There are a number of manufacturers on the market that sell these sorts of things. Um, and customers have even made their own. They're relatively simple devices and uh, they can be manufactured from products found at Granger. How about the learning curve for my staff? The biggest learning curve is the software. Most of our customers use something like Engrave Lab, AutoCAD, CorelDRAW, or Adobe Illustrator. If you can operate those, that's 95% of operating the laser. And teaching you how to use the laser is actually, can be learned in a matter of a couple of hours. And most sign shops already have that software on hand, they, obviously. They do, they're already running something like that. And anything that can print to a paper printer can print to the laser. So most sign shops, their learning curve is very fast. What about, uh, what substrates will I need? You mentioned acrylic, which most sign shops, I won't say most, but many would have, but some would never, would never use acrylic. You can use anything for cutting purposes that is non-metallic. So people use acrylic, they use plastic, uh, cork, leather, rubber, and so there's a large variety of materials that can be cut. 
there's an even larger variety of materials that can be marked. So you can mark glass with a laser, CO2 laser. And we should, I should have mentioned at the beginning, there are two types of lasers, CO2 and fiber optic, but a CO2 is much more versatile, correct? It is. The CO2 will do all of the materials that I just suggested, and the fiber laser is for metal marking only. It'll mark bare metal, and it will mark some engineered plastics, but that's it. So one of the reasons sign shops would want to have a laser is versatility, it's economical in terms of uh, the, the amount of man hours to produce certain types of signage. But what about expanding into other markets? For example, engraving, you mentioned engraving glass. A lot of companies, they start out with a single idea of what they're gonna do with the laser. Once they figure out how versatile it is and how easy it is to use, they move into other materials and it's a natural progression to move into different markets. Or let's say a sign shop is just, they manufacture just large signage. Uh, the laser would allow them to get into interior signage. I mean, that's a perfect example of, of how people migrate with the laser. All about adding revenue streams. Exactly.